Hi, Mr. Young. I'm Karen Young. I'm going to be your nurse today doing your uh, physical assessment. Um, we are going to be taking a look at your heart, uh, your lungs, your peripheral vascular system, and also your abdomen. Um, I did print out a couple of things here just for educational purposes that talks about the areas of the heart and lungs today that we're specifically going to look at. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and wash my hands. Um, would it be okay, Mr. Young, if we um, had you remove your shirt um, for this examination? Hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. And if you would like, um, I have a bed here for you, if you don't mind laying down on your back. And I will lay these papers over this way for you. I'll hold on to them. Okay, and if you would lay that. Um, just up a little bit here, if you wouldn't mind. Perfect. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at your cardiovascular system. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to palpate the areas of your chest here that we're going to be examining. Um, have you had any complaints recently of any chest pain, any shortness of breath, um, any discomfort at all that you've been feeling? No. Have you had any cardiac procedures done lately? No. Or any surgeries or procedures to your chest? No. Okay, very good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and palpate um, your areas. I'm going to start with your carotid, okay, which is located up here in your neck. So if you wouldn't mind, I'm just going to have you turn your, neck, your head to the left-hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect the uh, carotid area. By inspecting that, what I'm looking for is any kind of pulsations, any kind of masses in the carotid area. And then what I'm going to do is gently, not massaging, and not feeling both sides of the carotids at the same time to impair any kind of blood flow to the brain. So I'm just going to gently feel at the carotid area. And I am feeling for that carotid pulse, which is smooth. I don't feel any kind of bruise or anything in that area. And as you can see by inspection, that area is flat, and that is what we're looking for. Um, if I could have you turn your head this way and look at the other side of the carotids, this as well as I'm just going to gently palpate on the carotid and feel for that pulse. And looking and inspecting for the same things on this side as I did on the previous side. Then I'm going to use my stethoscope, if it's okay, it might be a little bit cold to the touch, and I'm going to start with the bell portion of the stethoscope and take a listen as well. If you don't mind, Mr. Young, just to gently turn your head a little bit to the left. And I'm gently going to take a listen in that carotid area. Again, I'm listening for any kind of sounds that would be indicative of any kind of cardiovascular disease, any kind of bruise, especially as the older uh, we become, that's something that we're looking for. Okay. And I'm going to take a look at the other side. Okay. And you may turn your head gently towards me if you would and listen with the bell. and then listen with the diaphragm or the stethoscope as well. Very good. Now I'm going to move down towards your cardiovascular system, and then what I'm going to be looking for here is very similar. First of all, I'm just looking at the chest itself, looking for any uh, changes, any pulsations that I see in the chest. And then I'm going to gently palpate. Um, no percussion is done on the heart, um, just the palpation. So I'm going to feel for that second intercostal space, which I feel, and the third, and the fourth, and down to the fifth, which is known as the herbs point. Also, as well as I'm going to move over this direction. And more the apex of the heart. Then I'm going to proceed to that left sternal border and palpate between those intercostal spaces as well. 
very good. No pain or discomfort at all as I push on here, Mr. Young. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to proceed to, to auscultate um, the heart. And I'm going to be looking and listening in those same areas of the heart. Now I'm going to continue and uh, listen to the aortic area with the uh, diaphragm. And that's going to be at the second intercostal area to the right of the sternum. And I'm just listening for the aortic area. And then I'm going to proceed over to the left side over the same second intercostal area, listening at the pulmonic area. And I'm going to move my way down to the third, the fourth, and the fifth, which is known as herbs point. Underneath, we're going to be listening for the mitral area. And then towards the right side of the sternum, we're going to be listening to the tricuspid area. Then we're going to move on. After completing the cardiac assessment, um, your S1, S2 sounds, the S1 sound is best heard over the apex, and the S2 sound is best heard over the base. Now we're going to move on um, to inspection of itself of the thoracic area and the lung area. First, what I'm looking at is for the rhythmic breathing in the patient. Um, the rate is normal. Um, there, it's rhythmic on both sides. I don't see any kind of unevenness with the breathing and is in no acute respiratory distress. Um, so we're going to move on with palpitation. Um, Mr. Young, would it be okay for you to sit up on the side of the, the bed here with your feet dangling over the side? Okay. So what we're going to look for is um, in the uh, pulmonary now we're going to continue with our, um, our lung assessment. Um, I have Mr. Young sitting up in the bed in the posterior position, um, and I am going to start with percussion um, of, the, uh, of the lung fields. So first of all, what I'm going to do to, is to do that is to gently put my, my less dominant hand over his chest. Sorry if my hands are cold. And I'm going to lightly tap and listen for that resonant sound. Um, and that is going to tell me that there is air filled in those parts of the lung. When I hear that dull sound, um, that portion is more of the, um, the bone portion. So then I'm going to proceed on to the next side, and I'm going to percuss the lungs as well. And there's the dull sound that I'm hearing. So since we are doing the percussion, I'm going to go ahead and um, also take another, another test um, to listen to the lungs, and that is going to be the tactile feminis. And in doing that, what I'm going to do is start up in the upper portion of the, um, the posterior side of the, of the body. And then what I'm going to do in these areas is I'm going to have Mr. Young, if you don't mind, to say 99. Okay? So go ahead. Say 99. 99. And again. Uh huh. And again. Ninety-nine. Right. And again. Ninety-nine. And again. Ninety-nine. And one more time. Ninety-nine. Very good. So basically, by doing that, what I'm feeling is that that vibration or that muffled sound um, when I'm pushing against uh, um, the posterior area of the chest. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try the bronchoscopy. This is a test that um, is the same type of. It's saying the 99, but I'm going to listen as well as he says it. And I'm going to take the diaphragm of the stethoscope. And if you can say 99 for me. 99. And again. 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 99. Repeat. 99. And again. 99. 
Very good. Thank you. So by doing that, what I'm listening for is the 99 sound. Um, that is going to tell me that there is not areas of consolidation and that there is areas of air within the lungs. So that concludes the posterior aspect of the, of the chest. I'm now going to have Mr. Young, if you don't mind, I'm going to step out of your way for just a moment, and I'm going to go ahead and have you swing your legs around, if you would, and sit to the front. Now, by taking um, to the front of the, of the chest, I'm going to take a look at the anterior portion um, of the chest. And by doing so, again, I did this on inspection. I'm looking for any kind of distress, any kind of change in rhythm. Both sides are symmetrical in breathing. Um, and this as well as I'm going to take a look at, now that we're on the anterior side of the chest, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, take a listen to the lung sounds in all the different fields of the lungs. I'm going to start by listening at, to the uh, bronchial sounds, of, and I'm going to take the diaphragm of the stethoscope to listen to that. So if you could take a nice deep breath for me. Like that. And take another deep breath for me. And let it out. My way down, take another deep breath. In. Oops, like that. And I'm going back and forth, take another deep breath from one side to the next. Listen to them evenly on both sides of the chest. Good, and let it out. And one deep breath. And let it out. These are the vesicular areas that I'm taking a listen to, which is mostly what the lungs is the um, is the sounds that you're going to hear. The bronchial vesicular areas is more towards the sternal area. If you could take a deep breath for me, let it out. Another deep breath and let it out. Deep breath and let it out. And another deep breath and let it out. Fantastic. And then I'm going to listen more laterally on the anterior side. So if you could take another deep breath. And let it out. Great. And another deep breath. And let it out. Very good. Thank you. So that concludes the respiratory um, assessment. Um, again, looking, listening to the tracheal sounds, um, listening to the vesicular sounds, and the bronchial vesicular sounds of the anterior chest. Um, we are now going to move on to the abdominal assessment. Um, if you would, I think I'm going to start actually. Um, if you would lie back for me one more time here, Mr. Young, that would be cool. On the abdominal assessment, um, we are initially going to just do it by inspection. So looking at inspection, we're looking for any kind of pulsations, any kind of masses in this area, um, and that we're not seeing. Um, I am having Mr. Young lie more flat for this assessment instead of more of an upright position. Um, so I'm going to do with a light palpation um, over the quadrants, the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, along with the left lower quadrant. I'm sorry, the right over to the left upper quadrant, down to the left lower quadrant. So what I'm doing is just lightly palpating. Is there any pain or discomfort when I when I do that light palpation on your abdomen? No. Very good. So then I'm going to do more of a deep palpitation. Um, on the abdominal um, area itself. And by doing this, all I'm doing is, is pressing in, again, feeling for any kind of masses, any kind of borders. If I'm up more of this, of this upper right area here, I'm looking for any kind of feeling for the lower aspect of the liver. Um, going down to the right lower quadrant, I'm palpating. If there's any kind of discomfort, um, that would want to be noted for any kind of areas of problems in the appendix. Um, up here towards the left upper quadrant, the spleen is located up underneath the ribs. I should not be feeling any aspects of that spleen as I'm palpating, and then also palpating deep on that left lower quadrant. Um, again, the contour is symmetrical. I don't feel any kind of masses, and there's no pain or discomfort um, that is felt um, during that assessment. Next, I'm going to be taking a listen now to the abdomen. I'm going to listen first in all four quadrants of the abdomen for uh, bowel sounds. Um, and I'm going to do that with the diaphragm uh, um, of the stethoscope. So I'm going to start in the right upper quadrant. 
and I should hear those tinkling sounds, um, which I do hear in the, uh, in the abdomen, followed by the left upper quadrant. Again, same healthy uh, tinkling sounds of, that, uh, of the abdomen is being heard, followed by the right lower quadrant, and as well followed by the left lower quadrant. Very good. After that inspection, um, I am then going to proceed onto the vessels within the abdomen. I'm going to turn my stethoscope over to the bell, and I'm going to take a listen to the aortic area, um, and that is um, right above the um, umbilical area. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to take a listen to the aortic sounds. That is easily heard. And if I deviate off of that, over to the right, I'm going to listen for that iliac. And then I'm going to go over towards the renal vessel. And be able to hear that as well. Very good. Um, I can, if I wanted to proceed more, go down towards more the groin area, and I could palpate on both sides for the femoral arteries as well, which they're easy palpable. Um, then I'm going to proceed now to the peripheral area for the vascular examination. Um, I'm going to stay in this position, if that's okay with you for right now. We're going to start in the upper area. By doing that, what I'm doing is just feeling the skin. Um, I'm feeling for the warmth of the skin. I'm looking for hair distribution on the skin on both sides. And it is equal on both sides and warm down to the fingertips. Then I'm going to be checking for capillary refill. In order to assess for capillary refill, what I'm going to do is gently push down on the uppermost part of that nail and then release. What I should see is that going from that whitish appearance when I'm pushing down and after releasing within one to two seconds, the capillary refill um, coming back. Also on inspection, what I'm looking for is in his fingers is any kind of clubbing of the fingers, which I do not see. Um, if I proceed down to the lower portion of the peripheral, vas I mean peripheral system, I am going to gently turn the camera towards the peripheral area, the lower extremities, so we can have a more visualization of that assessment as well. Um, again, what I'm looking for here is I'm checking for skin uh, turgor as well as distribution of hair, which is all the way down. And I do see some hair also um, noted on the toes. This is important if I see something more shiny could indicate a decrease of circulation to that area. If I roll, if you don't mind, your pant leg up on your other side as well. I'm looking for that warmth and it's all the way down to the foot. And I'm also looking for the hair distribution. And also I'm noticing that their hair is notable on the toes as well, which in a healthy, um, you know, middle-aged person, we should be seeing that, that, uh, that growth of hair. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assess for the pulses. I'm going to go check the popliteal pulses. And in order to do this, what I'm going to do is gently, if I may, I'm going to roll your pant leg back down here. Um, just for easier assessment, and slowly just bend your knee up a little bit. So I have the knee bent up. What I'm going to do is take my hands, cut them around on the inside aspect of that knee so they touch a little bit. And then I'm going to gently move my fingers away from each other and gently palpate in so I can feel for those popliteal pulses, which I do feel. I'm going to likewise do the same assessment. I'm going to roll this pant leg down and gently have him bring his knee up feel in to the back aspect of that knee and push in and move my fingers apart a little bit so I can feel that popliteal as well. So after that assessment is completed, I'm going to move back down to the, to the foot area and I'm going to feel for the pedial pulses here. So I can feel for that pedial pulse, which is very strong, and I'm going to feel for that pedial pulse on this side as well. And that too is just as strong.
those pulses that I'm feeling are about what we would refer to as plus two, um, equal on both sides, as well as the pulses in the popliteal area as well. The final pulses that I will be feeling is the posterior tibia pulses, and that is felt if you follow the, knee, uh, the, uh, the ankle over to this side, gently press some pressure back behind this area, and you can easily feel for that posterior tibial pulse. And over to the other foot, you feel for the same pulsation on that side. These two are about plus two, which is average, and that's what we're looking for. I don't look for anything bounding. I'm looking for just a nice, even pulsation on both sides. Um, I'm going to proceed back up to the anterior portion, I mean, um, excuse me, to the, to the arms again, just to feel the pulses that are, um, that are up um, in the arm area. What I'm going to do is gently turn this hand over this direction, and I'm going to feel just inside, right by down by the thumb, and feel for that radial pulse. Radial pulse is regular and about plus two. On to the other side, I'm going to feel the same pulse is the radial pulse, and that is plus two as well. And upon conclusion, I'm also going to feel for the brachial pulses. So the brachial pulses are going to be felt up in this area, and those are plus two, and the brachial pulses on the opposite side are also plus two. On the, on the wrist area, I'm going to go to the other aspect, opposite of the, uh, of the radial pulse and feel for that ulnar pulse, which is palpable at plus two. And likewise on the other side, feel for that ulnar pulse, which is also plus two. So the overall assessment of the peripheral system is normal, uh, within the normal limits. Pulses are palpated in both the, the extremities um, uh, uh, in the arms and the feet by, uh, bilaterally at plus two. Also, in, upon inspection of the areas of the periphery, I do not see any signs of uh, color dis discolorations, um, any edema, no varicosities were noted, and uh, the skin is the turgor, um, is normal, no lesions are noted, no cuts, no scrapes. So that concludes um, our physical assessment um, of the cardiac the pulmonary, thoracic, and the peripheral systems. Thank you.